Okay, so uh, we can start now, and anybody who has gone through the document can uh, type in the chat or also can uh, just raise your hand and speak. I hope my voice is clear enough. Okay, Nadia, I want you to share your understanding. Okay, go on, Abraham. Okay, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the challenge for this week is uh, somehow related to machine learning, and we are, uh, we are expected to maybe train a model to, to make a prediction about uh, a sales uh, about a sales information uh, for for about uh, for, for the uh, for six weeks in the future uh, and we will uh, train that model and we will make it uh, better and maybe evaluate it in order to, to give accurate prediction about uh, about the sets for for some company I think that's my under, my understanding so far. Thank you. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, and thank you for sharing, uh, Abraham. And yeah. and uh, we can continue. Uh, if anybody else can have want want to share uh, their understanding, or if they have any question, we can just ask. Yeah, uh, yeah, and also thank you, Matthias, for sharing your understanding. And yeah, that's completely right. So let's just hear from one or two people and start the introduction. Okay, Junior, uh, thank you. And to understand customer purchasing behavior and predict uh, future store sales by analyzing factors like promotion, holidays, and deployment, and also is, um, yeah, in competition. And this analysis will help in strategic planning, optimizing and optimizing promotion sales. That's, uh, that's a great uh, explanation. Uh, thank you. And yeah. Anybody else who wants to go next? Uh, okay, so I think we should just get started. So this week's uh, challenge will be you have uh, 
a machine learning engineer at uh, Rosman Pharmaceuticals, and the finance team wants uh, to forecast sales in all their stores across several cities and also uh, six weeks ahead of time. So the data is uh, from Kaggle's Rosman stores. A store sales challenge and you can just go over there and uh, make i mean take a look at the data to get more uh, understanding if uh, the one that is described is here is not enough so uh so yeah that's basically it so now we have to predict sales uh, across uh, the various stores uh, sorry Uh, so, <clears throat> so the data would have an ID, which is a, a unique uh, store and date people within uh, the state, and also store a unique ID for each store, sales so which is as a turn the turnover for any given day, and customers are uh, the number of customers on a given day, and open is, is just an indicator whether the store was open or closed, and state holiday indicates state holiday. Normally, all stores, with few exceptions, are closed on state holidays. So uh, you can actually see A is equals to public holiday, B means uh, Easter holiday, and C means Christmas, and zero means none. And school holiday indicates if the store or commodity uh, was affected by the closure of public schools and store type is uh, between four different stores so store models are a b c and d and the assortment uh, describes the assortment level so basic extra extended and you can actually read more here uh, what assortment uh, means especially in uh, retail in the retail industry and the competition distance, the distance in meters to the nearest competitor store. And now you have another ID, so you can actually compare the two the two stores on a specific day. And competition uh, competition uh, open since, and also you can actually understand uh, which which store was uh, earlier to be opened or to be actually to start uh, their service. And promo uh, means it indicates whether a store is running on a promo on that day, and also promo to is a continuing and consecutive promotion for some stores. So zero zero means a store is not participating, and one means a store is part participating. And promo to since represents uh, it's put as year slash week and describes the year and calendar week uh, when the store started participating in promo to which is a consecutive and continuing uh, promotion and promo interval describes the consecutive intervals of promo to uh, where intervals promo to is started naming for example like months uh, the promotion started so for example february may august november means each uh, round starts in february may august november or november or no november of any given year for that store, so it might be for uh, 2020 or it might be for 2021. And yeah, so the, uh, you can see the competency map mapping here. So you will learn how uh, you will learn ML loops and auto ML mostly, and also deep learning and machine learning. We will focus on these topics for this uh, for this one, and it's just. Uh, go over to, through the tasks and so now we we have uh, now we, in this task you have to uh, you have to explore the customer purchasing behavior just give me one second okay sorry about that Okay, so and now the task would be to explore. So exploratory data analysis uh, would be applied here. And as you uh, in, in your previous week, as you guys have more understanding in what an EDA is and also how uh, to actually check uh, distributions, how to check and compare between the data sets, like creating 
univariate analysis, bivariate analysis, and multivariate analysis. So now, check for distribution in both training and test sets. Are promotion distributed similarly between these two groups? So which means, uh, what are the differences between those groups? So for example, you, you might have uh, uh, distorted promotions in one of the training data sets, and also you might have a steady uh, promotions in the test set. So you have to check that and also check and compare sales behavior during and after holidays for the data sets provided and also find out any seasonal or any uh, seasonal purchase behaviors and you can actually under, like try to understand the correlation between sales and number of customers so the number of customers that did affect the sales or not so for example it does it might not mean like uh, directly they are related but you have to actually find out uh, check and find out based on the given data set and also how does the promo affect sales so when promo uh, are promos attracting sales or attracting more customers and also if you if uh, you uh, finding or outcome is uh, let's say uh, for customer has a direct effect on sales so the higher the, the more the customers the higher the sales so which means uh, so for this one when if your answer is promo are attracting more customers so you can actually conclude that uh there are, there is more sales or promo actually affects sales and also uh, could promos be deployed in more effective ways so you can understand the pattern of where uh, how the promos are distributed and now you can actually check whether uh whether there are more effective ways of doing it and now it trends of trends of customers behavior during store opening and closing times so uh let's say uh when the store is opened at morning at 2 or at 8 a.m uh how does that affect the number of customers and also uh when uh the when, uh, in closing times also and now you can you have to check how a settlement uh, Type affect sales and also how does the distance to the next competitor competitor affect sales? What if the store and its competitors all happen to be in a city, and does does actually distance matters? So for example, does the does being closer to your competitor affects your sales? You have to check that too. And how does opening and reopening you of new competitors affect stores? And check for stores with. Uh, any as a computer distance, but later have values for computer distance. So, which means later on at some time they have a computer distance at a, uh, some distance. So, how does that affect sales? You have to check that and also uh, know how to interpret those results. And also, you have to uh, apply logging here. And uh, so, you just uh, uh, use logger library using Python and uh, log your each steps by clearly stating uh, what uh, your function is doing also and also what uh, what you're trying to do and now uh, you understood the data and also you understood uh, the distribution between the two the test and the train data set now it's time to predict uh, the sales so prediction of sales is as uh, we discussed earlier it is for uh, six, uh, six weeks ahead of time. So uh, now the company get to have uh, or can plan ahead of time. And you have to follow the following steps. So now the first step is pre-processing. So now you have to understand how pre-processing is important in machine learning modeling. So you have to convert all numer non-numeric characters into num numeric. You have to handle non values. You basically have to do data pre-processing, right? So, and generating new features from already existing features. So, for example, you have to, you might have to create some features that you think are useful. So, in our case, you have few dead time columns, so you, you can uh, extract and create new features. Use it like um, following from the weekdays, weekends. Let's say is is uh, the day was weekends or in weekdays. Number of days to holidays. Number of days after holiday. You can actually 
uh, to that end, you should uh, scale the data and also uh, predictions. We have. It will help the machine learning algorithms to predict more effectively. So you have to apply equality and distances and you can use standard scalar in a scalar for this. And now we will build models using a scalar pipelines and other so now at this point uh, at this point you will be uh, using tree based algorithms like random forest regressor and just we'll just uh, try to check whether the model is efficient or not and now we'll choose the loss function so the lo so loss functions indicate how well your model is performing so this means uh, the the loss function affects the overall output of the sales prediction so different loss functions have different use cases so in this challenge you have to choose your own loss functions and you need to defend the loss function you choose for this challenge and also feel free to be creative with, with your choice and the next part would be post prediction analysis so explore the future so the future importance of some of model so which which are the most important features to actually uh, to estimate and predict uh, the sales and also that will give you uh, confidence and now we serialize your model which means you can actually serve your models in a production environment so you need to serialize them and uh, so there is a conventional way of saving machine learning models so there is a, a date and after that the time which is and followed by the extension which is uh, PKL or PKL and now you can track prediction from various models so for example you have you created you trained and create uh, create save the model today and you, you want to compare uh, a model that was previously created let, let's say two days ago now you can actually uh, clearly distinguish and tell which uh, mo which result is uh, from which model and now uh, you will move on to deep learning. So now we tried a tree-based algorithms like random forest regressors, and now the, ta the next task would be to build model using deep learning. So deep learning thing, techniques can be used to predict various outcomes, like, so for example, uh, just it's not limited just for future sales, and but now we will use it for future sales, and uh, you, you will be uh, creating a deep learning model uh, for using uh, LSTM or long long short term memory, which is a type of uh, RNA or recurrent neural network. So you can use either TensorFlow or Python libraries to for building those deep learning models. And this is not the uh, end. Sorry about that. Okay. And uh, now you. Uh, comfortably you can actually run it in google collab so you will you will not face any uh performance issue with and any cpu and also gpu issues so the next would be uh you isolate into time series uh, data and depending on your conclusion from two from, from two uh from two above differences and check for autocorrelation and also partial autocorrelation of your data, transform the time series data into supervised learning by creating a new five target column, which as it, you can just uh, see how sliding window of time series data sections uh, done in, in the in the given reference, and now you have to scale your data. So, which means you build each of the data has each of the features has to be in range of minus one up to one and now you'll you can build your lstm regression model to predict the next uh set. so yeah this is basically it and uh today we will have time series data exploration given by yaya let's just go, go over the tutorial schedules and and on tuesday or which means tomorrow we will have a predictive machine learning session so you will understand how uh how sales forecasting work how how to uh, achieve pipeline thinking and also how to be efficient how to write efficient and modular codes and also try to uh, by sharing references between uh, between you guys and we will have uh, a deep learning tutorial on 
uh, trash day given by Reddit. There are a few references. Make sure to go to go through them and understand how uh, how what loss function is and how our escape pipelines cre created how to merge data sets and also uh, you will not be deploying, so you, do, you you might not need these references. But if you want to uh, try it, you can also uh, check. And also, you will have to. Uh, there will be. Uh, I mean, uh, there is a reference for random forest, and also there is a reference for time series analysis. Too. Yeah, and yeah, that's basically it. And if you have any question, you can just raise your hand and ask. So I will ask this if how many of you understand the challenge. You can just react. You don't have to speak. Okay, great. Uh, let's just say there is no data collection for this picture. Yeah, Abraham, Abraham, you are right. There is no data collection. You just download the data from Kaggle. And uh, okay, the folder will be okay. We will give you, we will make sure you all have permission for data folder. But make sure uh, you will have uh, access uh, right away. And yeah, that's just uh, for uh, a tutorial purpose for the junior work group. That's uh, for a tutorial purpose. So when the sessions are given, we'll just use those data. Stock data will be used, for example, for deep learning and also for predictive machine learning. But the one, the data that you guys have to actually use is from Kaggle, and the link is actually placed in the challenge document. So, uh, find it there, and you can just talk the data. From I will just uh, make sure you have the data. Maybe if you can't uh, download the data, I'll just uh, share it. Uh, I'll I'll make sure to put it uh, in the data folder too. Just try to download data and also. Uh, uh, mention it on Slack if you guys uh, can't access it, can't download the data. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if if you have any questions, again, you can uh, raise your hand or and speak or type in the chat. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, you can uh, make sure if you have if you face any issue, uh, just make sure to mention it on Slack. And yeah, I'm just going to stop the recording.